Hey there, everybody, and welcome. This is Tevo, Tevo DRC of Tevo Creative Media Ministries. We're out here in the Barista Fellowship area, so you'll hear the congregations that are gathering and clattering around. But um, I'm here because I represent the many who are really fed up with the systems and the people who are just plain old curious or do not relate or just have never heard anything, never met a real Christian. And they're just aware of the phonies that because the media and all the, you know, the vile enemy wants to play that up. So we're trying to bring out new topics for clarification, for re-identification of who and what is a Christian, what is a minister, what is a fivefold office, what is a prophet. And I am a prophet, one of the prophets, but I'm teaching it from the perspective of all my life being a Christian in ministry, literally. And I'm going to teach it with how to make it not spooky, how to make it demystified, how to make it down to earth relatable, and also remain teachable that nobody ever will arrive, nobody owns it, nobody has it all, nobody should be a, a totalitarian in their ministry, their doctrine, because otherwise you are upsetting the f first church teaching portrayed by Paul in Ephesians 4, the community, and that's what we've been up against. I never knew that one had to be me to not get walked over, bowled over, dominated, and ruled by false teaching and theology that is prevalent, that is now commanding the gates of the Holy Spirit wells primarily. I mean, you can talk about it, but it's doctrine. I try not to name names, but it's affecting our country and the survival of the churches in America, the church. This is leadership training. So over on teammateu.com will be more video, audio, podcast. And then the other part of Teammate U is the Maven of Apostolic Theology, tclleader.org. Excuse me, tclleader.com. The issue is to have more articles there, but to get topics out. You know, I know that sweet baby Jesus is big and real. We want to have him sweet baby Jesus. But sweet baby Jesus is now like PC. It's now like Namby Pamby wobbling and, you know, it is just not balanced with the mature Jesus who got, who grew as the Bible teaches in a scripture, Jesus increased in wisdom. From the baby Jesus on up, Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. That means if Jesus Christ had to do it and he was the perfect savior, the only perfect theologian, the only perfect prophet, then all of us need to do that too, including myself. On a continual God-led basis, really, there's nothing you know, when this, the teaching says by Paul, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You can have self-righteous, too much freedom, you know, that kind. But you can have false teaching trends and fancies of the day and misogyny and hierarchy and control, doctrine of the Nicolaitans set up to govern, because there's so many people have been, that you can squelch community, you can squelch it. And that's what we've had to, that's what we've had to not know. I wouldn't raise like this. Uh, I didn't know the Holy Spirit crowd, the prophetic crowd like I do now. But it has got to let God's people free to hear God and not be afraid of displeasing their submitted covering authority type stuff, you know. So, the spirit of the Lord is freedom. All right, let me talk about a difference. Because of there is a lot of totalitarian shepherding rule. Uh, if you just not, like there's a difference between a denomination, and I'm not criticizing their good parts, many good gifts and talents, all right? The we-centric shepherding. We are the world colonial wasp-centric. I'm more global. I bring out, that's what I know about it, because I, you know, I, I get typecast or racially profiled in their midst when they're spooky spiritual, and yet they have great talents that need to be affected for the future, you know, future church and the generations to be mature. So there's a difference between having a, let's say, Caucasian historical 
background, the paradigm. Now I deal with African Americans, Hispanics, Asians all the time. African Americans seem to get me. They light up when they see me generally, African Americans, because I am a global, not a we centric. I'm not trying to control. I don't need to be over them. I don't want to rule them. I want to say, what have you, I want to share as their sister and their friend. So I have a diverse nature, a vibe, but I know that it triggers the white we centric colonial in America in Christian ministry, spirit-filled prophetic, because they want to control and they think they deserve to own us all. That's all I can figure out. All right, so we clone, I'm a, there are we-centric colonials and they're we-centric, which is we are the world colonial in the Christian community. Not, some are sweet, some are not. Then there's we-globals, I'm a we-global. I have an energy and a lot of rhythm. I do have a lot of rhythm. Syncopation, you name it, I can do it. All right. But there's a difference between a denomination, a choose to go to a tightly run church, and a system, a legalistic system. As I've shared before, I'm trying to get it across. I'm not after them. I'm after just our country being preserved, the leadership knowing how the other people in the seats are being treated well or not well. That is it. At age 24, after being raised by my father and mother, who were Baptist pastors, senior pastors, and happy campers, none of the law, none of the shepherding, none of this overseer governing, you know, all this fighting, not racially biased, never said, Tavo, you should not do anything because you're a female. Not at all. It's just like whatever God says. Through that, I learned that in osmosis, I picked up, yes, fathers, the head of the home, chain of command. They were happily wed. I never knew any pastor was not, really. I just didn't know that. And I look back and I think, man, that was, to me, a representation of how to model a pastor, a leader, a real Christian was like my dad. My dad primarily was an easygoing friend of anybody not compromising, loved my mother, respected her, and they were a team. So in hindsight, I believe in marriage, if they're, if they're really married these days, I'll be honest, you gotta you know, see your Bible. If they're married, then they wanna please God, they're gonna be Ephesians 5, 21, chain of command, not control, not little woman, waitress, all this stuff. Ephesians 5.21 says, everyone, including married couples, mutually submitted in the fear of the Lord, the holy fear of the Lord, humility. After that, it mentions the topic of submission, which has gotten way, way out of hand, like some kind of slave driver, you know, fault finding, watching those women to see if they're going to be, that is plain old ugly law accusation and it doesn't resemble Christ. If you resemble, if you want to resemble the Messiah Christ who is from the Middle East, not a white person, you will look at how he respected and treated every relationship when he was alive on earth. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus' actions and reactions, all right, with his mother, with women, leader women, fallen women, lone women, baggage laden women, weeping women, he never accused them. He was never their judge. He was never a fault finder, a sin spire, a harlot. That is all law. And that is nothing but old timey country from the hills, private interpretation that got popular because it's misogynist. A lot of it is accusing. It's the fruit of the doctrine. So when after being raised happily, gently, and cherished as a person first, a human person, then a female next. I've always known the Lord by grace since nine. You know, I knew him and I grew up through Billy Graham, Jesus person all night. So we are trying to shock them because the end is nigh. The end is late. These are the last days. People are stressed. You cannot, now you can't even go to church. If you're hurting, they're going to diagnose you with their pop psychology. They're going to spy you like you're evil because they've never talked to you and they will not deign to. They're elite. 
the elite, country club elite. All right. It has gotten so bad trying to fellowship with the saints. So much accusation, poor me, accusation, fault finding that I just had to study the Bible for the last 30 years as I saw it grow and grow and grow and these traditions set in the new neo-Pharisee among the nouveau riche. It's the nouveau riche you're usually it. I was not raised poor, country poor. I was not raised poor. Now you can have all these things in all the different colors of ministry, all the different colors, but I'm talking to my own skin, all right? Within the, because they are being used now on media as racists. That's the new Caucasian equals white equals evil. All this, shit, I think about the white. And, and when I was out in the seats, God sent me at age 24 to study the body of Christ. He said it would be all colors, all different styles that believe the Bible, to know their doctrine, know their teaching, know their um, habits, you know, and, and their pet peeves, their red flag buzzwords. And I was led by the Spirit slowly through the last generation, all my life, 45 years of this, as the movements began, the TV got big, mega form, now systems, clans and clubs and cliques and cults, even occult cults are out there. But I was not sent to be known. I was sent to be led to the Spirit to sit in and, you know, sit under a lot of the known and unknown, but to observe the fruit that is really good and the fallout. But I didn't know what I was seeing. I just knew I was supposed to study it. It didn't come to me until through the years that I was seeing what I was seeing taking root in America was the Holy Spirit getting perverse, getting rich off itself, getting um, mercenary, hostile, clubbish now they pre-qualify you're not you know it's no longer many people accepted in the beloved respected in the beloved that's apostle paul basic core foundational teaching for any kind of church white black or brown it is now our our turf do you qualify are you gifted and pretty and thin young black brown or white enough to be approved our stereotype. And that is why we have to deal with this. And I'm up front. You know, the Bible teaches me faithful are the wounds of a friend. I'm their friend. I really am. And if I was allowed by the pedigreed respecter of person's pomp and crowd to even feel loved enough to want to chat, I could have, you know, gotten to be their friend and put a few tips in because I've been out here as one of your helpers. All right. So we look at before media, we look at during media and now after it's hardcore with Hollywood, fan clubs, demonic, everything, everybody with a mic and everybody with a video. All right. The talking faces are everywhere. I got a picture. God has given me a picture of what we are dealing with in this day of Christ following. Who is real? Who is not? How do you know? It's hard. Picture a jar, a white jar, a mason jar of confetti. All right, you have confetti or glitter. Probably glitter might be even more fitting of the day. All that glitters is not what? Gold. Picture a jar of glitter, a little jar, and you shake it. Well, all that glitter bumps, you know, goes around and you can hardly see anything and figure out what's going on, but all the glitter is shiny and mystifying, you know, it's attractive. That is life right now in the media age. Every idea, every person, every human presentation, every oppression, every suppression, every demonic, every good, every glory is in this glitter jar, shaking it up and all these people who've never met the Lord, who have never understood the Lord, who really don't understand because it's so crazy out there now. All the fighting and all the accusation, all the ministry bias and black and white and politics and everything else, misogyny, everything in this. Showbiz, showbiz, fancy, make it fast, get it what you want. Demas and Eli and a few Enochs, the remnant 
first love, it's tougher for the normal, even the Christian, to know what's right and what is wrong and who's real. And when you go down and try to go to a church, you know, I go to, I like, thank God for YouTube. YouTube. Because I don't have to go out there in the mixture and face the fierce stares of the fancy dances who think they can read me, scowl in my direction, peg me, know my innermost life and my innermost thought, my innermost character, but never speak to me, never love me, never want to even say hi or even smile. It is so bad. The religious spirit is just horrible. I would say that some of the worst ones, as I've studied, has been the, well, Western European Levitical patriarch and their matriarchs. I tell you, I don't know what it is about matriarch. A matriarch and another female, a, you know, spiritual, LP, LM. I'm the founder. I'm the office apostle. Lowercase a, servant leader, Galatians 1, 1 and 2, like Paul. Servant leader, off scouring of the world, happy in it, but not famous. I go in there and I am read like a red raw and defiled as a prophet. I can feel it. I'm a prophet, but I'm all five for years. I just don't have to prove it. I don't have to do it their way. I, this is a season to come out and say it because they're hurting people and damaging. God's good work and the head leader. It is usually the top leader that's pretty good, but they're surrounded by their keepers, their handlers, their staff. They have no clue all their minions are doing this. I go in there to some of these groups where they have great, a great team. I can't, as a senior office who is embedded for, in the United States for decades, knows black, white, all the cultures and kinds of Christ followers, been missionary Baptist vineyard. I've been in all sorts of places, high and low, high and low, around America, DFW, Florida, Tulsa, Missouri. I've been in many places, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina. I've just been sent. Well, they don't know me, but if they're prophets, they're screwy. If they're prophets, they can't tell these kind right now, this brand, can't tell an Elijah sitting in the office from an evil Jezebel coming to take them over or a witch. It is so bad, so bad, and so defeat, de defiling, but it's also a proof something is off in their doctrine, their teaching, in these movements. Many movements, great and small, are in this, doing this. It's occult, cult, and false teaching, and just plain old crazy, spooky. Isaiah 5.20 is the word for this. Isaiah, the national warning to the priests that were blocking God's Holy Spirit in Isaiah 10.27. The whole first 10 chapters of Isaiah talk about it. God's leaders, the Hebrew leaders, were guilty of three sins. Chapters 1 and 3, 1 through 3, said that God's people were getting the lambast from the national prophet Isaiah for the following, they had fallen away into little G gods. Today, maybe they're little G god. One of them is their government, their false government, smothering, covering. They had gotten into false religion. Maybe they have an idolatry of their own gift and their own sources of their own knowledge that is only their style, and it's an idolatrous prophet model based on only their own kind. They've never read anything like community. It's about them. I'm not saying it, but it could be. The third little, the third issue the national prophet had, God had to pick the bone of contention was that they had turned vain. Now they were proud. Now they were elite. Now they were saying to be multicultural, but they really didn't. They only wanted a certain kind of vibe that fit their pleasure. So those three things had combined in the ministries and the leadership of the Christian of the Hebrews. Now we say the Christians, not talking secular. We are talking to the Christian today. And the Isaiah first three chapters of sin, including the women, are mentioned. The mean women are mentioned. All right. Vain. All right. 
right. Then it says by the time Isaiah 5 is spoken or written, it says in Isaiah 5.20 that God's people, a woe, God pronounced a woe. Woe to you who call good evil and evil good. And then to skip ahead briefly, Isaiah 10, 27, the reason for God's rebuke. He said, I'm trying to send you my yoke breaking anointing, the Holy Spirit, which would make your neck so fat that it would make the fierce Assyrians unable to take you over and wipe you out in your whole culture. That's where we are. It's play playtime is going on. Foolishness, utter destroy, destructive foolishness. Right. And I've been trying to get them, but they keep me away like a, I mean, they, my spirit, whatever is on me, the anointing, when I'm very calm and peaceful, approachable, happy, a happy camper like my dad, peaceful, repels, I mean, it makes them come after me or whatever, the white group, this kind of white group. We centric, proud. All right. So Isaiah five twenty. All right. How can that be? And Isaiah. Oh, they're so. Everybody knows them. They're wonderful around the world, but their egos are giant. You know. Uh, you mean you can't take the little kids, the the immature, non-famous in your midst? Jesus, my Messiah, said, "Suffer the little children to come unto me." He didn't rebuke people for not being perfect like them or gifted or, ed, you know, educated or elite. He, he wasn't me. Jesus was not me. So I would translate and make an effort to populate their ministries by saying, accept the everyday walk in person like a little kid. Not being ageist, stereotyping, racist biased, gender bias, cultural bias, looks bias, vibes bias, performance bias, popular, well-known bias. All right, that's their people too. All the people that are devout followers are like this too. That's why I'm letting it know. It's pretty sad. It's pretty hypocritical. It's off the mark of real Hebrews 10.25, fellowshipping with the saints. It is very tragic. It is very disturbing to go in there and know that you are only looked at as their turf, their territory, their possession. It is very disturbing to know that you're being scanned and scanned by 10 or 20 or 5 or 3 over and over but never spoken to you. Silently scan and you're a prophet and you know this from the moment it happens. And you know who they are, where they're sitting, and you know that subculture. You've been around it for all these years. The discovery years, the learning to have cooked this long for me to understand it, what to do about it, why to say it, how to address it, also how to recover from it. I mean, it is a cult spirit. It is occult cult. It penetrates. It defiles. It invades. It is spooky. It is damnable. This type of invasive, no love. It is opposite of community. It is opposite of Paul. It is anti Christ. And they want revival. And these people think big, you know? They think, oh yeah, those mean those mean people are just, you know, those mean Satanists, those mean witches, those mean not our political party, those mean, you know, they're those they're so mean, they're so mean out there, all their religions, all these people, false politics, all these they're so mean. No, you're doing it. You have done it and you're still doing it. And the crowd is giant that does it with you up and down America, all over. It's patriarchal white. There can be showbiz in black and patriarchal. There can be showbiz in any color, any style, any male or female. But I have been led because I care for them. And I care for all the others too. Believe me, they're easier to deal with. They're more fun. <laughs> I don't have to feel like I'm being judged and penetrated by occult powers and psychic energy and evil eye word curses like I do. You whelp, you few whelp that have done this. But it's it's huge in America coming from the deep south, started in Virginia, in central Virginia where I used to live. 
when they couldn't even speak to me, but they started to go after me and many others, I'm speaking of many others, because they read me from afar. They read me and I had, I was married, I had family, I had a board, I had many people I was accountable to, but they're covering their shameful, evil, witch-watching, witch-watching accusation, which is just like the Salem witch trials spectral evidence, I think. Reading people, this was the group that does this, this is why I'm after it. Reading people, but governing people who say they know, governing people who say they're it, governing people who say they're the capital A apostle, the capital, you know, the office prophet, the ones that serve them, under them, and follow them devotedly, they say they know they're self-righteous. They read you and never speak to you. That is evil. That is judge worthy of the Lord judgment. Calling evil goods. That's how I wrote. That's how I know this because I thought if I'm not doing anything, all I do is show up. They could talk to me and know my heart. I'm always abiding in James 3.17, which now I teach defensively and to them to discern people better. If you're a prophet and you can't tell an Elijah from a Jezebel or someone coming to do you wrong and you murder people. You know, I lived in Dallas and one day I, and I'd had my worst experience. I had been in domestic violence. I'd been abused and I was still getting witch watched. I guess they thought I was up to something because I didn't look peppy, I was just surviving. And I met 30 other people, one man, the rest white women, they did it to the same group. And board members that sat in on their meetings and said to me, a black board member, they call people witches all the time. False teachers, false preachers and pastors. So I was not stupid. I was going through. That was the issue. I just can't do but so much stuff if you're going through hell, you know, and, and you keep your joy and sanity and your family and your two children, you go through. But you don't have fun on your face because you're surviving and they don't know, they don't want, they don't even care. All right? So people in pain are going to show up to your quasi ministry to your quality ministry, to your ministry. You've got to know the difference between an Elijah and a Jezebel. You call these prophets, they ain't prophets. These are spooky, super sensitive and finicky fine arts people. That's all they are. That's all this is if they act like that. Up in Virginia, I was murdered. In central Virginia, I literally, the devil, tried to kill me with all the hell and all the relentless abuse and them, these, targeting me because I'm a prophet seer if they did talk. I mean, nobody thought that. I knew all these pastors, all these leaders that were not in that one demonic false teaching group, but I lived near them. That's how they could read, you know, always worth, you know, the fault finders. They did it to my mother's friend too, single women alone. Now, I was married, but I was sent alone like I'm sent alone a lot. Doesn't bother me. I always take my friends and family with me. I'm not, I'm very social, but I'm not controllable. I'm not controllable. That's what they must read about me. I'm not controllable. I've learned how to, I've dealt with some of the biggest controllers in my whole life and my family. So I understand I'm not controllable. And I'm not a controller. They don't know that because they won't, they don't love enough. That's the issue. They don't love them. So I was murdered, and it took me decades to get over it. I mean, the trauma, the PTSD, Dallas didn't help. I multiplied it, and I'm back. I really am good. I feel good. I'm not mad at them. I'm telling you how not to do it to other people. In trauma, I had trauma, and they don't care. They don't get it. Now I hope they will. I do. I live Psalm 143 where I could, the tragic part of that psalm. I did, God, that's how I know God. That's how God is not spooky. That's how I know my turf. That's how I know God is so good. And I met him. Now, I'm, here I have this ring. I want to point out, this is my mother's ring. I'm not wearing fortunes of thousands of dollars of 
ministry money or own money. This is a Steinmart ring. I just forget and I flash it because mom died and I got it. That's what I got. Steinmart. All right. Um, so when I went to Dallas after being literally, I had to put the ministry down. I had a prayer ministry. I had a writing ministry, a teaching ministry for years around the area until this group targeted myself in the spirit of the devil itself. The demonic shepherding movement, she's patriarchal white, all white, will not confront, will only read you, then tell everybody what they saw, and that's how people are destroyed all over America. This is really bad. Religious spirit, Richmond, Virginia area. Not all, because I would knew all these people before that movement came in and surfaced. And I'm pretty wise. I, when I What I really you knew, because I was studying the doctrines. God had told me at age 24 to study the doctrines. I didn't know they these existed. So what I did was make the best of it. I thought, well, you know, I'm never not thinking. I'm never not watching. Never not being with God ever, no matter what, no matter who, and no matter how. I'm always hanging out. I mean, it's been God's goodness. So I just thought this is my chance to study them up close and their fruit and what they do. That's how I got to know and recognize wealth and scanning. And then all these ones, Florida and North Carolina and South Carolina, certain ones, not all. And I know what is healthy doctrine and I can get away from it. I can teach on it. The Friendly Fire Fellowships came out of this. The wealth movement that I identified as shepherding has come out of this, all this. All right, so when I moved to Dallas, I was at the gym, the two safe places for me, the happy places in Dallas for 15 years, basically. Because I like Dallas, I just didn't like this phony religion, materialistic spirit of the ministries at the grassroots. So what I found was that I enjoyed the Barista Fellowship, which is the Starbucks type realm, respectful, not biased, not ageist, more friendly, not controlling, you know, just learn some things to point out, to give tips to all kind of leaders and followers. And I like my gym. I really love my gym. And so I would go there and it would be fine, a happy, safe place, a community, nice people, including Christians that were nice, with me. It was not, it was diverse. I would never go to a gym that was not diverse or any kind of place or any movement, I really wouldn't. So it helped me a lot. But when I was there one day, this woman came, I met a woman and she said, oh, I used to live in Richmond, Virginia, the Jerusalem on the James. She was a Christian. She said, oh, it was the Jerusalem on the James. And it is on the James, north and south, it divides. And I thought, that explains it. She said, I mean, I'd been there. She said she'd lived in the West End and I was, you know, all over town. I was in this Midlothian and I was my, you know, knew the West End, had lived in the West End also, knew the whole area after 30 years. So she said, oh, yeah, they called it the Jerusalem on the James. She lived in the West End. I went, wow, I never heard that. That explains it. That explains it. Jerusalem murdered the prophets. Jerusalem murdered the three prophets. God has his ways. He has his ways. So God is so good. So I got out of there. had to come up here to cleanse from the last 30 years of this 1992 on. The, uh, I had to come up here to get out of the DFW to get rid of that whatever. So now I can teach. I'm out of the charismatic movement since 2012. I'm not out of the systems. I go to church. I can go to many churches, but I like churches where I know they're fair, they're um, honest, emotionally honest, not playing games. They're not all white. They're lively. And I'm working on the teammate university college is, and maybe two locations of training. I'm really leery and really really leery about dealing with tongue-talking people. I'm very skittish because they're programmed with decades of nosiness. Who are you under? Is she submitted covering false religion? 
or if there's certain kinds, they're going to be scanning me, not loving. They're going to say, is she in fault? Is she, you know, what is her secret sin? We need to probe her. Deep, dark scanning. I'm tired. I want to be loved. I want it to be simple. I don't want Hebrews 10, 25 to be a demonic stronghold in America. They're all over, big and small around our country. I believe African Americans are much more Surely there's some weird ones. And I know everybody, all Hispanic, got weird stuff in there, you know, cult type ministry, Asian stuff. But I've dealt with so many people that are not like this one kind, which are my race. And I did have to, when I found I was getting racially profiled by this group, only this one kind of group, this one kind of Christian, which is now huge, spirit filled, big movement, small. I realize my call is the spirit of prophecy. It's always been. I can't get near it because of this attack, satanic attack, false religion, occult attack, unholy, not Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit's my term. So I pulled out, had to peel off all the levels of whatever invasiveness. It really is. That's why I could teach on it because to help people spare you. I want to spare you from having to go through some of this occult. I didn't know it. You know, everybody's doing their bit. You know, a lot of people are trying hard. I'm trying hard. But you, you're not perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. And you encounter things. You encounter stubble amongst the hay. You encounter rebellious religion and witchcraft in Christian communities when they accuse you without speaking to you. That is witchcraft. That's some of it. False authority. Second Timothy Three, one through five friendly fire fellowships are the result have been produced. This teaching of defensive ministry, defensive against false teaching because it's so prevalent, it's so accepted, it's so goody goody two shoes, and it's so sweet baby Jesus wrapped up with hornets. All right, it pulls you, and even though I've really been amazingly guarded be careful what I sit under and who I and, and I don't gossip about them but I'm saying now the autocratic totalitarian spirit of the cult is giant it is too giant the systems and God is shaking that back in Dallas before I came out before I was allowed to depart escape the freedom <laughs> cleanse myself for two years to get back to normal literally I met somebody else too in the where I go work out, nice lady who lived in Dallas six months. She said she had, she still has PTSD from working in the culture of it. I, I understand, but we love them. You know, I enjoy, I was sent to Dallas and I am still sent. I am sent, an apostle sent to Dallas, DFW and uh, to America. But just because you're sent didn't mean you're received or respected. Uh, just because you're sent doesn't mean you have to live there and be in the environment of the morass of super spirituality in the culture. Uh, just And so I can be sent to Dallas online. And I'm on their team. I'm for them. I found out that I could tell the doctrines now by the way they, the demeanor of the people, how they interact. I can really tell doctrines. And I know fault finding and Demas is big. Fault finding and the Demas achievement, measuring, you know, the Bible says, don't measure yourself by yourself. And that goes on. Don't measure yourself by their look, is my advice. Don't measure other people by their look, their bucks, their lack of bucks. That is a respecter of, it's big respecter of person's spirit. That's what I'm teaching on this. I was allowed to go. I was sent to go. I was supposed to go and build. I was supposed to go help the region. I was supposed to give wisdom and impart and instruct and creative anointing. I was supposed to do that, and I still will somewhere when the time is right. I do not want to be out in mixture, Ishmael. I don't want to be out in spooky play games, mind games, emotionally dark, intrigue, but quality, beautiful ministry. I don't need that. So we pull back. The Lord has had me. He had me for a while. Even though I'm teammate oriented, you don't see. 
you know, I'm really sent to have teammates of many colors, males and females. I'm a human's minister. I deal with human's ministry, not ladies. No, 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 I'm humans. And God has always led me to male, because I, tr I treat people first as respect for, yes, they're male, yes, there's chain of command, that's why I can teach Galatians 1, 1 and 2. I'm a Galatians 1, not sent out by any one person, any one group, but on the team, on the community team. And when I can find people that I know, really know that will speak into my life, I'll be accountable. I am accountable. But right now it's better to have no, it's better to have no authority that you allow to speak into your lives at family than the wrong ones. There's evil out there. There's a lot of evil, a lot of false witness. There's a lot of, uh, are they gonna use me for my gift? Do they really wanna own me? Are they really a seducer? Are they, you know, with a male, male thing, you male thing of them. Who are they really? And I'm warming up, I had to warm up, and I'm warming up to some, a few, that are real gentlemen, that are nice people, quality and I'm warming up to some that are females that are you know but I cannot trust until I'm very careful now because of what I have experienced and I am seasoned but I'm saying I'm really full of joy I've never been this happy I'm one that is works with well with being praised you know Tebo you're doing well you're doing you know at a girl that type thing I'm, I work really well with that but you don't find that you never find it you find it oh yeah low class ministry you find like yeah she's not like a, you know this jezebel spying horrible stuff in the holy spirit when i down in florida i was sent to florida before dallas dallas was 2005 to 2020 all right but i was sent to dallas uh, to florida from 96 to 2003 many times and i dipped I, I needed to. I needed to dip in the river of the many worship stream good things. And I was sent to the media side and some famous, not famous. But I also had never been around the occult in ministry or the common believers seeing witches everywhere. And that red flagged me. So one time I was giving a conference, I did music conference, I stir up the gifts, let people create on the spot. I'm really a spontaneous person. I can't be. And so I'd I've written and composed. That's the missing link now for me. That's my tent maker. Is my I just need the place provision to have my music studio back up and film and record. That's really what's missing here. The only thing I feel really great now. All right. So I sent down to Tampa area. I was always sent to Tampa, Panhandle, Orlando, basically. So you see a lot down there. As you know, if you've been there, you will see a lot. <laughs> many levels in ministry that type of holy spirit stuff <clears throat> so i sent down there and after i gave a conference and the pastor and i were sitting around and they said tavo you know that group that white witch watching group keeps a witch list in their national headquarters that was 2003 and i went oh my and i knew them from my first experiences up in the north virginia that's so sad because see it is and i'm going to run out of battery so i might sign off i forgot to plug in this morning with my computer but the issue is it's pitiful that's tragic that they would now vilify which is what they've done i believe they vilify so they peg somebody and their audience from far off the others peg them because they don't like to love and relate then they Right, you know, they call them a witch, or they always pick somebody. Before I was older, I noticed the history that when I was younger, there was an older woman, a white woman, that they would single out as the evil woman, as the intercessor or the witch. I noticed this in the Holy Spirit crowds. I never knew it would be me. <laughs> I never knew that I would trigger that because I think that fault finding spirit is back under the law of patriarchy, matriarchy and it's a hierarchy as well. It needs, I think there's an enmity, a battle in that, a spiritual realm and a false teaching and the Levitical, what do you call it, Levi, who is the uh, misogyny is in this crowd. S Samuel, what do you call it, Eli, 
Auntie Hannah on the front porch steps. A lot of this ties in. So all it did, all this has done, was give me great teaching fodder, great time to observe relationships. What's going on? Who's doing it? What kind of doctrine do they do? Is it me that triggers it? Is it me? Did I bring it on? No. I sit there in James 17 form, waiting to be this, if you need to talk to me, do it. So they do not confront. James 3.17, I'm going to part with this because i got to hang up. i got to sign off. My battery's wearing out. The binding way of assessing with somebody, assessing somebody from afar instead of minding their business is to assess them by their character they resemble. And do you resemble, all of you, James 3.17, that the wisdom, any wisdom from above is first of all pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality, without hypocrisy. And I always sit like that. I'm always there. Approachable, teachable, on their team, not there to, for evil, usually to help me get through my recent battle. That's by usually visiting or sent by the Lord to know their group. The churches that I think are good quality, I prefer them. I'm a sheep herder. I'm not battling with them, but I don't deserve, or I, and right now, by this time in my life, as a senior office prophet and apostle, I demand not to be trifled with. I demand not to be a cult witch watch. I demand that you be respectful with everybody. I demand that you lay off. I demand it, or I will know it. Prophet Elijah lives within me. You know, part of some of like a lot of people do that. But I mean, I can tell you now who's doing it and where it's coming from. I also know that if they're praying against me, I get little pinchers or little control. It's witchcraft. I know when that happens and doesn't bother me. I just put the blood of Jesus over it. I bind you in Jesus' name and I send you back. All it is is a controlling person. That's all it is. So even though I'm a little wild and I talk, I'm pretty calm, pretty happy, very contented, usually pretty very contented, and I'm not in the occult. I am not in the occult and I'm not going to be psychic either. I can teach on the, I will teach on the spirit of prophecy starting in John 16, 13, that when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you, not me. He will guide you into all truth. He will not talk about himself. He will talk about things to come. John 16, 13, start that. God is good. Yes, this is a maverick. This is your maverick, but a very calm and happy maverick. I'm not a maverick. I'm an easily entreated maverick. And I'm not a anybody's floozy maverick. And I am not going to be anybody's, but anybody's teammate as a peer. But right now, I'm so grateful not to be in the systems. And um, I believe in taking up your cross daily. And believe me, I have carried a cross. This has been my greatest cross to carry. What happened to me and defiled me and abused me and then my former domestic violence were the crosses, but they were true crosses. But do I care now? Do I care? I forgave, and I'm happy, happier than I've ever been, and on the mission again, once again. The South will rise again. Not in a bad way, not in a Confederate way, not like that. In fact, the opposite, the anti-racist way. But this person, who is always a treasure, for the body, to the body, through the body, will rise again because of Jesus, just because he's so good. God loves you. This is Tavo DRC signing off for now. TavoCreativeMinistries.com .calm.com. Bye-bye. Blessings.